So did you know that you're supposed to change the firing pin spring in your Remington 700 every once in a while? I didn't know that. I don't know anything about Remington 700s, but I pulled out a couple of old family guns recently. And while accuracy has been pretty good, our velocity has been a little bit all over the place. Very, very big standard deviation and extreme spread numbers. So a lot of people have recommended that I change the firing pin springs. So I've got some ammunition loaded up for both this 223 and also a 243. So this is a, a BDL varmint special and the 243 is an ADL. So I want to shoot some groups and get some velocity information, then go swap the springs, shoot them again, and we'll see what we can see. And even if we don't see anything, we still hopefully get to shoot some small groups. And the springs are like six bucks. So there's really only upside here. So with the 223, these are going to be 10 shot groups except for these, this first one is gonna be a nine shot group. Here's the load information on the screen. It's Vitavori N133 with the 40 grain Hornady VMAX. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so that is a really good start. That first shot was, it was truly a cold bore shot. I hadn't fired the gun at all. So what did we have without that? Yep, without that guy, we had a 0.65 inch group and total was 1.01 inches. That's good stuff. So the velocity was 3488 and the standard deviation was 30.1. So kind of happy to see the poor standard deviations. I expect to see everything before we switch the pin spring like up. I kind of picked these loads because they were the best example of the problems we've seen. So yeah, off to a good start, just as crappy as I was hoping. Okay, so the next load is with the same bullet, and this time it's 27.0 grains of Power Pro Varmint. Okay, so that's a 0.78 inch group, and looks like that's about what we deserved. Had several of them go a little bit high and left. Velocity was 3551, standard deviation 28.9, extreme spread 99. Good deal. Okay, one more 223 group to go before we switch over to 243, but I better give the gun a minute to cool down. I'm trying to pace myself. Okay, so our last group in 223 is the same bullet, 40 grain VMAX, this time with 20.5 grains of Vitavori N120. So I'll have to say I'm pretty pleased with that. So that one was a 0.71 inch group, velocity 3451, standard deviation 26.4, extreme spread 84. I'd have to say I'm pretty pleased with our target so far. The SDs are bad and the accuracy is pretty good. Pretty good summary of our experience with this gun so far. So all right, let me get swapped out to the 243 ADL. Okay, so this 243 is a standard 90s vintage ADL. 
and I've only got two groups that I want to shoot before and after, and they're only five shot groups, because the previous videos I did with this gun, we were shooting an 85 grain Sierra hollow point, and I've run out of those. So today I've loaded the 90 grain Sierra Game Changer at a 2.8 inch overall length, and the first powder is going to be Reloader 16, 41.5 grains of Reloader 16. Not sure what to expect here. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that's a 1.25 inch group. Did I mention that this is a 12 power scope? I saw those first three shots come in and I knew it was a fluke. So the velocity was 29.77, standard deviation 23.9, extreme spread 68. Okay, so there's one more group and it is the same bullet, 90 grain Sierra Game Changer, this time with 45.0 grains of H4831 SC. Okay, so that's a 1.52 inch group. Velocity was 29.16, standard deviation 21.6. So it doesn't look like that bullet's gonna be a winner in this gun, but we'll see what happens with the new spring. And speaking of that, let's get back to the bench, let's swap these springs. Okay, since you're a Remington 700 guy, you know about the trick where you take some cord, you hook it right there, you pull it back, and you put a dime there, right? That's what it normally looks like. Pull it back, put a, put a dime or a penny right in there. So, once you do that, you can unscrew and remove the entire firing pin assembly thing. Now, to decompress the spring, I found this thing on Thingiverse. I'll leave a link down in the description. I 3D printed this part right there and then two of these. Got a little recessed hole there for the firing pin. So, I'm going to take these and drop them down in here and make sure the, the hole for the firing pin is pointed in the right direction, just like that. Then I slide my firing pin assembly into there. And before it goes all the way in, the threads are gonna hit up here. So I can just start screwing it in. And once all the slack is taken up, it's gonna start compressing that spring. So as soon as I tighten this up just a little bit, my dime is gonna fall out. There it went. And then I keep screwing this in farther. And that exposes this pin that we have to drive out. Couple taps and that comes out. I've taken two of these apart so far, and the first time it comes out, it is a little bit of a pain in the butt. And what I found more of a pain in the butt, you know, th this comes off. It just pulls off of the firing pin. And just like this one's being a little bit of a pain in the butt, sometimes they don't wanna, sometimes they don't wanna come off of there. Should just need a little tap. And there it goes. So that's what was holding that spring pressure. So at this point we can start loosening this up and this is gonna pop a little bit. So try to, keep, try to keep tension on it as much as I can. That's gotta be it right there. There it went. Okay, so there's our old spring. Here's a new wolf spring. These are available at a lot of places. Then we reverse the process to reassemble. This goes together pretty easy. Okay, so then screw it in enough to where we've got enough room to get this aligned. So the firing pin needs to be 90 degrees, yeah, about 90 degrees from the notch so that when we slide this on, hopefully our holes will line up. Looks pretty good. You can usually get this started pretty far in with just my fingers. A couple taps to finish the job. That looks good. Then when we're loosening this up again, we need to get our dime back in there into the top slot, which is probably the toughest part of this. There it went. 
And there she is, back into the bolt and we're done. There it is. Now before I get myself confused, I'm gonna label these old springs in case I wanna go back and do additional testing. So that's pretty much it. I just need to swap this other one here real quick and let's get back to the range. We'll go ahead and finish up the 243 first. It feels weird to just start shooting. I'm gonna give it a couple dry firings maybe. Everything feels good. Yeah, it feels normal. So first up, this is our Reloader 16 load. 41.5 grains of Reloader 16 with the 90 grain Sierra Game Changer. Okay, so that was a 1.26 inch group. Before we had a 1.25. But with this one, that first shot really screwed us up, didn't it? Yeah, the last four went into 0.65 inches. Velocity was 29.89, standard deviation 15.2, extreme spread 38. Okay, next is the same bullet, the 90 grain Sierra Game Changer, this time with H4831SC. Okay, so that was a 0.98 inch group. Velocity was exactly the same as it was before, 29.16. Standard deviation improved to 13.9. We'll look at all this crap closer once we're done and get back to the bench, but that's better SD numbers in both loads with the 243. All right, let me get everything reconfigured and we'll switch over to 223. Okay, back to 223. Uh, I guess I better, let's do some dry fires. Make sure everything feels okay. Yeah, seems okay. Okay, first up, our nine shot group of Vitavori N133. Last time the group size was 1.01 inches, but we had that flyer with our very first shot on a cold bore and the best eight shots were into 0.65 inches. So let's see, let's see how it does now. Starting to get some wind gusts. It's been pretty calm all day. Yeah, it seems like it's going to calm back down. Okay, so that's a 0 0.66 inch group, velocity 35.16, standard deviation 24.5. Little bit better than last time, but not by much. Okay, next is our Power Pro Varmint load, 27 grains of Power Pro Varmint, 10 shot group. Had a bit of a wind gust on that last shot there. Probably should have held off. Okay, so that's a 0.97 inch group. Velocity 35.82, standard deviation 42.8. Not good. 
the extreme spread was 141. I guess we'll take a closer look at that later. Okay, one more group to go. This is 20.5 grains of Vitivori N120. Okay, so that was a 0.85 inch group, velocity 34.45, standard deviation 27.2. Almost exactly the same as last time. All right, I'm gonna pack up and get back to the bench. We'll have a closer look, but my first thought is that there doesn't seem to be much going on here. So this is the 243 brass, and I wanted to see if we could tell any difference in the primer strike before and after. So this row is the old spring, this row is the new spring. And then over here, same deal, old on the left, new on the right. I'm not seeing anything here. Everything looks the same, as far as I can tell. And with the 223, I dropped my freaking ammo box as I was bringing everything inside of the house. So these 11 pieces are the only ones that I know for sure did not fall out and go flying. So, so this is old spring, new spring, old spring, new spring. And same deal here, I'm just not seeing, not seeing any difference. So if you imagine a buddy shows you this target, he's like, man, I just got done doing some maintenance on my gun. The top row is before, the bottom row is after, what do you think? I'd be like, how much did this maintenance cost? And when they're like $7, I'd be like, dude, nice work. Like I see, like the way that it is and everything, like that's, that's, that's awesome. That was definitely worth your time. They're the same target, right? It, absolutely nothing changed here. The 223 groups got a little bit worse and not, not just on like the group size numbers, just kind of looking at the groups, you can tell these just aren't quite as tight as these were. And I think that was because the wind picked up. With the 243, the groups are a little bit tighter in the after, and I think that was because I just didn't take the time to set my bags up good enough, and I was just getting some, some horizontal movement there kind of on the, on the fore end, my front rest. But all of this, I would definitely say, are, is within the, within the natural variation of my marksmanship skills. As far as velocity statistics go, on the 223 side, two of our three SD numbers got worse, but it was just a little bit here and there. With the 243, the SDs got a little bit better, but none of the changes were dramatic. And I think most of them are just down to the fact, you know, we're talking about five shot groups or 10 shot groups. It's just not a big enough sample size to get repeatable exact numbers, but we've got enough to know that they were bad before, they're still bad, and the problem wasn't the, the firing pin spring. I don't think charting any of this crap out or looking at graphs or anything is gonna give us any more insight. So I think that's where we'll just leave it. It doesn't seem to have done anything for me, at least with these first two guns, but it doesn't mean it's not worthwhile. You know, a, a firing pin spring going bad is going to have symptoms. Misfires eventually, right? But before you get to misfires, it wouldn't surprise me at all to find there's some weird stuff going on and that sometimes a firing pin spring can clear up some issues. So don't mistake this useless demonstration for a condemnation of routine maintenance. I'm a routine maintenance guy. So that's it for this one, folks. See you guys next time.